I was like, I just used that. I was like, you know what, he made it out. Like, I'm in the middle of nowhere. Like, I'm gonna make it out. I have to say a big, huge congratulations. Thank Nominated you. for Best New Artist at the Grammy Awards. I want all the tea. <laughs> How are you feeling right now? Where were you when you found out? Who did you call first? I was in Atlanta. You know, the day before, they were like, yeah, they're supposed to announce it at like 12. I was like, okay, I don't want to wake up early. I want to just wake up. I don't want to wait. I don't want to feel that. I like, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, my manager busted through my door at like 11 with like all my friends and like a camera crew. <laughs> and I was just like, no. <laughs> like so the, the pressure was going to stress me out. Um, but no, it ended up being really great. And I had to use the bathroom the whole time. It took like an hour for them to like say it. So I kicked everyone out immediately and then called my dad. So good. And then I told my dad, and he was at work. And um, yeah, he was super pumped. I called my mom. And it was just, yeah, it was, it was incredible. It was an incredible feeling. Really, really grateful. What did your for dad that. say? He was just like, I'm so proud of you, Miko. Like, you did so good. <laughs> so like, good. he's like, you're supposed to be nominated. Like, just, you know. Beautiful. Uh, yeah, just Incredible. like very supportive, nurturing, you know, sweet. So lovely. I'm, I'm sure they're so proud. You know, your sound is such a indescribable little mix. It's got some Motown, some R&B, a yeah, little yeah. bit of 90s pop thrown in. So talk to me about your process and really like blending all of these incredible genres together. Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like since I was a kid, I, I was always really into like just rapping and I was into soul music, I was into R&B. Um, just stuff I grew up on, but then I was also introduced to like romantic songs from the 50s from my parents. Mm and like Mexico, so I had like that influence and honestly it was just like my surroundings, I was just like kind of, I loved it so much, I loved music so much, so I wanted to make all different types of it and really just honor like the different genres in, in a way that, that I can and um, yeah, I think it just comes out of my music and same with like being bilingual, mm -hmm. I feel like, you know, my music is the same thing, it's like, you know, both. You know, Grammy recognition, mom and dad really proud, and then you add the Neptunes to the mix. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I Insane. mean, check, check, check. The most nerve-wracking day of my life. Talk to me I about it. I was like, well, I, I had gotten a call that like Pharrell was down to work. So like, well, you got to come to Miami. I was like, cool, I'm going to go to Miami. Wow. So I go to, um, I get to Miami. I get into the house and, and um, like Pharrell walks in. And I'm like, oh, man. like wow. our, I had met Chad before. Me and mm -hmm. Chad had worked. So um, I say, what's up to Chad? We're talking. And then... Um, yeah, he walks in and like stomach drops. I'm like, oh, I don't even know what to expect right now. And then uh, we, we're making, like, you know, he, he just sits down, makes a, makes a beat in like 10 minutes, five minutes. And he's like, you like it? And I was like, yeah. And then he's, he's like, uh, all right, I'm gonna be back in 20 minutes because there was another person in the house. So he's jumping from sessions. And I was like, okay, cool. So, he, you know, he leaves the room and I was like, okay. I have to. Yeah, you got 20 <laughs> minutes. Got 20 minutes. <laughs> you got 20 minutes. Uh, Timer's uh, on. I, was, I literally wrote something in like tw 20 minutes, had it done, and I was like, ah, you know, it's cool. I hope he likes it. Like, I was, I was so nervous that I couldn't really, like, you know, process if I did was good or not. So he comes in, and he's just like, He's like, oh my gosh, I love it, I love it, it's great. Like, and he goes and gets all his friends from downstairs from the other session, brings them in the room, like, y'all gotta hear this no, shit. No, you know when and the friends come in. Yeah, so yeah. I was just like, man, this is insane. Like, this is, and then like after that, like totally different like relationship. Like, he was, he was like, yo, like, how long are you here for? Like, let's extend the time. Like, let's make like five more, like all this stuff. And I was like, okay, I extended my flight <laughs> immediately. I was like, yo, let's just get, let's get on this. And uh, yeah, no, it's, and he's really great. He's, and he's been really supportive since then too. So it's been really cool. That's amazing. First of all, you mean yeah. you're a professional. That's why the 20 minutes, you know, you just, you got the job done and obviously in, in a fabulous manner and to, to continue <laughs> that relationship. But to think about you as, as a shorty, as a young person, and then you're having these experiences, like were you, did you manifest these type of things? Are you pinching yourself? Like, yeah, what? definitely. I think that was like, cause I don't really get like a starstruck, mm -hmm. like, but that was like yeah. really, really, cause like, you know, my, my, my best friend and, and my best friends were there with me and we all grew up, you know, listening to Pharrell and, and it was just like, it hit even more like the synchronicities and just like knowing that, you know, reassurance that you're on like the right path mm -hmm. is always like, you know, great to have and yeah i mean 
it, that was incredible. Incredible time of my life. It was, I will never forget that. I couldn't sleep that night. So great. I was up, like, listening to the song for, like, until, like, four in the morning. It was crazy. You deserve it. Like, you know, fans love your music. I mean, you're really multifaceted, but you're also your dancing, you know. And TikTok, I'm like, wow. Like, I'm a huge Michael Jackson fan, and I feel like, you know, I see elements, you know, in your Michael. performance, right? Oh, wow, thank you. No, no absolutely. Oh, no, it was just like, <laughs> this is, I mean, you put, all, you put the Omar twist on it, right? But, you know, I definitely <laughs> a see spicy, that. A little spicy, you know. A little spicy, but that, that MJ feeling. Who oh, are, wow, who are, thank you. That, that's incredible. I don't deserve that compliment, but yes, thank you. Yes, you do. You. <laughs> who are some of your other inspirations? Well, this? Michael lived down the street from, from my house growing up. <laughs> Yeah, three minutes away was his house that, that he grew up in. Wow. In Gary, it, Indiana. Wow. So I was, I grew up with that. Um, and I was just like, you know, I was like, I just used that. I was like, you know, he made it out. Like, I'm in the middle of nowhere. Like, I'm going to make it out. So, yeah, that. And then, um, you know, Prince, um, huge Prince fan. I think I know more Prince songs than any other artist. You know what I mean? Like, I, I became really obsessed with him. And then... Um, you know, same with like Lauren Hill, Joni Mitchell, mm -hmm. Neil Young, Aretha Franklin, and yeah, just a lot of music. Greats, greats, and greats. Yeah, yeah all the greats. When you're when you're dancing like that, do you tour it as a dancer, as a kid? Well, yeah, well, like locally. Locally. But yeah, I was I was um I was uh doing Mexican folk ballet. Okay. It's called Ballet Folklorico. Amazing. Which is uh, you know, big sombreros, skinny pants, mariachi outfits. And I was, uh, I was young, I was probably like in third grade. And um, we like, I'd leave, I get to leave school at lunch and like go gig at like a high school, or not a high school, like a college. Mm -hmm. And then like, I was like, it was like a whole group, like all the girls had like these dresses and they would be like doing this stuff. And yeah, it's just like very traditional uh, dancing in Mexico. And that sounds like my first like visibility on like the stage and, and stuff like that. And I just kind of just became obsessed with it since then. I got into like popping and locking in and like tutting after that. And then I would go to like quinceañeras um, when I was a kid, uh -huh. like 15, and like dance battle everyone. Cause I, <laughs> I love that. Because <laughs> I love the, the dance movies, Step Up, Stomp the Yard, like all that stuff. I was like, you know, just, I just loved, yeah, like the, the, I guess like not so much competition, but I would battle. Like I would battle, like I remember. I had my little arch nemesis. There's always there's parties. always one. Yeah, there was one. <laughs> there's always one. She was dope. She probably still is dope. But yeah. And how much of that that history, how much of that performance do you take into today with you? Oh, like all of it. I'm so happy that I spent the time I did. Mm -hmm. Um, because I use it all the time. I'm like, I'm on stage, I have to perform. It's just confidence at the end of the day. I remember when I was uh when I was first performing. I was like constantly looking down at singing and thinking, like, <laughs> and, like looking down very shy, but I was dancing at that time, but I was, I just like didn't have the confidence of performing like my songs yet. I wasn't, I wasn't there. Um, but then I was like, you know, I'll do this. I, I've been dancing. I've been on stage mm -hmm. before, like, you know, and then after a while, it just kind of, I was like, oh, I can use what I know and I could apply it and yeah, like that. All clicked and... Here we are, here yeah, we are, yeah. Grammy nominated. So a few weeks ago, uh, the anchor of eTalk, Tyrone Edwards, had a chance to speak to Giveon. And Giveon chose history in Toronto for the last stop in his tour because he said, this city allows him to take his time to breathe. Now you're performing at history in Toronto, second last stop of your tour. Yeah. Why Toronto so close to the end? Is there any specific reason or just? Happen that way. I would love to say there's a reason, but my <laughs> agent made it. And I, that's fair. But that's fair. I mean, like, I know, I think, I mean, I love Toronto. I, I played maybe three times here. This would be my third, maybe fourth, probably. Um, but yeah, I've never seen the venue or been there in history, great. so I'm excited to go. I'm going after this. I've played tonight. So, what makes your Canadian fans special? Well, in Canada, last time I was here, it was just like a lot of the fan pages, like, um, that I saw, like, were very supportive. They were all Canadian, and uh, it's just always been love every time I come here. And um, I remember one time, like, I came and, and did a performance, and I was just wearing a hoodie and, like, a beanie. And, like, I was, but I really gave it my all. Like, I was, like, <laughs> I was acting like it was an arena. Like, I was, like, <laughs> okay. I was being crazy. But it was, like, I don't know, maybe, like, 800 people or something like that. I just remember the energy, and I remember the seeing everyone's faces and, and just, you know, just trying to, you know, 
entertain and get, yeah, it's like, I love well, we that. love your energy. Congratulations on all the success. Thank and you so much. we hope you keep dropping by as your star continues I to will. rise, please. We'll be back. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Really lovely chatting with you. Same. Uh, yay. You rock. A you picture. Rock. No, you rock. No, you rock. You got no, on the thank you for sharing all those stories. Yeah. Me, I would have. Because I'm wearing no, sequins tonight. But it's neutral. Neutral. Shift the fringes. Right? Yeah. I know.